To start off our Dollar Tree compilation video, I wanted to share with you guys the macrame side table I recently created. So I'm starting out by using this clear plastic bowl you can find at the Dollar Tree, as well as this pizza pie dish you'll find in like the kitchen section. And for the base of my side table, I'm using an Ikea waste bin that's just been um, flipped upside down. And that is what our clear plastic bowl is going to be sitting on top of. And this is pretty much the basic structure of my side table. I'm using some super glue to attach all of the pieces together and then I'm gonna let that solidify before I move on to the macrame part. After the plastic bowl was solidified on top of the bottom of the waste bin, I just needed to now wrap macrame cording all around the entire structure. So I started at the bottom because there was a little lip there at the bottom that I knew that if I did it that way, it would be a lot easier to make sure that everything was kept really nice and even and straight. And to attach the macrame cord, I'm using my hot glue gun and I'm using some Gorilla Glue sticks to make sure everything sticks really well to the structure. And I'm just going to repeat that process over and over and over again. Notice how I'm never cutting the macrame cord at any point until I will get to the very, very top. There is this one section here that it didn't quite match up perfectly. So I just kind of had to squish the parts down to make sure that everything still stayed nice and straight, even once I moved onto the bowl part of the structure. And once I got to the top, I decided to flip it upside down so that way it would be easier. I always like to try to do things more so at eye level and I think that helps keep everything looking really like well done and professional looking. Just for reference, they do sell macrame cord at the Dollar Tree, but you don't get very much and it is really thick. So I opted for macrame cord on Amazon that I will link below. And now it was just time to macrame the top piece. So I'm just going to start by the back, just doing two rows and then moving that row around to the top up until it gets to the very center. And I feel like this looks so fresh and ready for spring to come. I wanted to share with you guys how I made this foam tube table lamp. And these tubes are a seasonal item at the Dollar Tree and I ended up picking up this light cord off of Amazon so I will link that part below. But everything else for this project came from the Dollar Tree. After feeding the cord through, I just decided to cut a slit in the foam so that way the cord would have a place to rest inside of and the lamp would be straight and don't worry about there being a little bit of space around the light fixture to the foam. We have a solution to that problem. But before I take care of that problem, I wanted to just paint the foam white. Now, I went through a little bit of trial and error. I tried just using the plain acrylic paint that the Dollar Tree sells in the Crafter Square section, using one of the paint brushes that I picked up in the like hardware utility section, and it was just not covering that green foam just as it was. So then, after that, I tried to use the baking soda trick, and it did better, but it still wasn't enough coverage. Like. You can't really tell in this frame because they kind of just look like speckles, but it was really, really green on top still. So finally, I just had to use the spackle that the Dollar Tree sells, and that seemed to give me the best, most consistent coverage um, to cover all that green up. After I did about two full coats with the spackle, I felt like it gave it a really nice ceramic-like texture, and it gave a really nice full coverage. You may notice that I removed the light cord and I did that just so I could get the inside very well and not worry about getting paint or spackle on the cord itself. So that's totally optional, but I just wanted to make sure everything was really well covered before I added the cord back in. And once everything was totally dry, I fed the cord again through the tube and then just placed the cord down in that slit that we created in the beginning of the DIY. And then I just had to kind of adjust the top because you can see that little hole there. So I just took the spackle with my finger and I just kind of filled in those gaps so that way it looked nice and seamless. And this is how our table lamp turned out.
For the next project, these are not necessarily spring related, but I tend to find a lot of these foam wreath forms during the springtime specifically. So that is why I'm showing you this DIY now. So to start, I'm just taking a steak knife. You could use any sort of serrated knife to cut the foam and I think it makes it a lot easier. And I'm just cutting it in half. And then after I cut it in half, I'm taking a little bit of sandpaper and I'm just kind of like smoothing out those like rough spots. And then I'm just gonna find the center point and I'm just going to make a larger hole there so I know where I'm going to need to melt down. I just kind of eyeballed this. I don't know that there's a really great way to measure it. So this was something I just eyeballed. And this is probably the most important step. I'm going to be using some metal piping here that I had left over from another project and I'm going to hot glue that metal piece to the foam. So that way it has some stability because I've tried this project before and it just doesn't hold up because you don't have something in in the middle uh, to attach it that is sturdy. So you definitely need to do that step in order for this DIY to work. And then kind of a similar thing, I'm just going to make the holes for our candles. And for paint, I'm going to be taking some brown paint from the Dollar Tree as well as some black paint. And I'm going to actually not mix them very well together because I wanted it to have this sort of gradient effect as well as some baking soda. And after I mix that all together, I'm just painting it on, giving it one nice even coat using a foam brush also from the Dollar Tree. And you can still see a bit of the green poking through. You cannot paint styrofoam using spray paint, unfortunately. So you do have to use paint paint. But I love how this DIY turned out. I think it looks really great. And I think I definitely got that look for less. And for this, I really wanted to create a bubble vase. And I have so many of these clear ornaments left over from Christmas. And I decided that this might make the perfect thing to make a small scale modern bubble vase. To give the ornament something to sit on top of, I actually grabbed this PVC pipe when I grabbed all of the supplies for the first DIY. I grabbed this one as well, so the ornament would be able to sit upright because it's not, it doesn't have a flat bottom, it's rounded. So I just applied some hot glue and then I glued that to the very bottom of the ornament, leaving the top part exposed so it could function as a vase. But before I add the copper pipe, I wanted to paint this a color, not black, not white, so I decided to go with this chalky finish anvil gray that kind of looks a bit navy as you can see on my fingers because it exploded everywhere. I love this little modern vase. It was so easy to create and also so affordable. And I wanted it to be not just like your typical doorstop, which they do sell at the Dollar Tree. I wanted it to be a little bit more chic. So I picked up some of these black rocks from the Dollar Tree as well as one of these cylinder gift boxes. They're like in the gift section and I'm taking supplies that I already had to create this project. So the first thing I did was I put all of the rocks from that bag into this gift box and I just wanted to make sure that it would actually stop my door, which it did. And then I had this leather spray paint as well as this old thrifted belt as well as my favorite thing to use lately, which is leather repair tape. I just gave the canister one quick coat of that satin leather spray paint and now I'm just measuring the top piece of the canister to know where I'm going to need to make my markings to put our little handle. And when I had enough space removed, I was able to put that um, old leather belt through as our handle. And with our handle in place, I just made sure to glue those pieces together as well as glue the top and the bottom piece of our doorstop together. And then just using a little bit of force, I'm placing the top into the bottom. And if you didn't wanna use the leather repair tape, they have tons and tons and tons of contact paper you can use from the Dollar Tree for just $1. But because I already had this leather repair tape on hand, I decided to wrap this canister with that. And with the rest of it completed, it's just time to take that leather repair tape and wrap it around. Thank you. 
one of the design trends that I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of for 2022 is Wabi Sabi. And I actually saw this DIY done on TikTok, so I wanted to replicate it myself. So all you need is a plate, and I picked up that plate from the Dollar Tree, as well as some PVC one inch pipes. In the anthropology image, there are four holders, but because this plate wasn't quite as flat, I just decided to do three. I also picked up a couple different paints from the craft store and I'm gonna do a combination of these, but before I paint this piece, I wanna make sure that I glue down those PVC pipes to the plate first. So that way everything is like one solid piece before I apply all of the paint. I just decided to use hot glue for this project, but I believe in her tutorial she used crazy glue, but I'm sure you could use something a little bit stronger like E6000 if that is your preference. For the placement of each candle holder, I kind of just used the circles on the plate as kind of like my like rough guide on how far out I needed to go and how far each one needed to be spaced apart from one another. I also glued from the inside of the pipes just to make sure that everything was really well solidified underneath. And then, like I said, I went to the craft store, so I'm starting off with some brown paint, and then I'm going to add the gray paint, and I wanted to make it almost like the color of clay. When talking about a wabi-sabi design aesthetic or a design style, I think it's important to note that it feels a lot like minimalism with the exception that there is this acceptance of aging and imperfection and there seems to be less contrast and much more warmth. And as we are all still spending lots of time at home, I think it is a design trend that is going to be here to stay. After I got the color that I was looking for, I then added the baking soda. And again, this is just something I eyeballed. I probably did about a tablespoon and I mixed that in as well before applying it to our piece. And to apply the paint, I'm just using a small craft brush that I picked up from Michaels. I do recommend using a higher quality uh, paintbrush for this sort of a project because the Dollar Tree brushes tend to shed quite a bit and you don't want that in a project like this one. Another thing I wanted to add before you start painting, make sure that there are no hard, like hot glue strings hanging off of those pipes because that will make painting this piece a lot more challenging than it really needs to be. So just take the time to remove all of that excess like dry glue. And then I just kind of made small little arches just to kind of make circular motions so the entire plate was covered. And this was how it looked after one coat. And then I ended up doing two more coats making it three coats total. Overall, this project was really easy to do and I think I definitely was able to achieve that wabi-sabi aesthetic with this piece. I came across this home decor piece at the Dollar Tree and I was not crazy about the agate piece. It just, I mean, it looks cheap, but then again, it is only a dollar, but I think we could do better. So I decided to remove that agate piece just using some clippers or you could use a knife or you could use a saw if you wanna get really intense, but this worked out just perfect. It snapped off really, really easily. After I removed that piece, I just wanted to even them out because I'm actually going to take one of those foam hoop wreaths you can find at the Dollar Tree and just place it directly on top of those little prongs. In the past, I've used my drill and a very um, small drill bit to drill a hole right through, but because it's foam, you actually don't need to do that step. You can just kind of puncture it using something like this or a kebab stick. I've actually made something very similar to this before and you guys loved that propagation project, but I wanted to try to challenge myself and do that project similarly, but only being able to use Dollar Tree products. So this is an all Dollar Tree DIY, so you don't need to order anything off Amazon or anywhere else. Everything that I use for this project came straight from the Dollar Tree. If green is your color, that would be great, but it's definitely not mine, so I decided to just paint mine black. I got the black acrylic paint from the Crafter Square section at the Dollar Tree, as well as this baking soda. I definitely think the baking soda hack is here to stay because it just makes the paint 
apply so much thicker and gets you so much more coverage. So I definitely use that hack often and I recommend it to everybody. Now for this part, I'm just applying a little dab of hot glue into those holes so that way it's more sturdy on those prongs, but you can totally use the super glue that the Dollar Tree sells and actually might be better because sometimes hot glue can make the foam disintegrate a bit. So um, definitely pick up some super glue if you plan on doing this project. So the part that makes this a lot more affordable and make it able to be a completely Dollar Tree DIY is we are just going to be putting dried florals in here that I just picked from the backyard. And here's how it turned out. I found these amazing organizers at the Dollar Tree and as of now they're just one dollar but I know that could be subject to change here very soon and so I stocked up on these ones and I got a bigger size and a smaller size and I wanted to kind of make these feel a little bit less Ikea like and a little bit more traditional so I found this hardware actually at the thrift store and it reminds me so much of hardware I had had in my kitchen growing up. So I decided that I was going to add these little knobs to the top of these canisters and I love a mixed metal moment right now. So to do so, I'm just going to take my drill and I'm going to kind of measure the screw that I'm going to need to make the hole for the knob and it is really that easy. I could have chosen to paint it all one color, but I really like the mixed metal look. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of it, but this is just such an easy way to just kind of up the ante on a typical Dollar Tree product. For the next project, it's actually very easy. We are just going to be taking one of these bowls that I came across. It's got like a, a floral blue and white pattern, which I think is very trendy right now. I've seen it at a bunch of different high-end stores and we are just going to be making a three wick candle. One thing that you guys actually taught me and it worked out really well was if you warm up the bowl first, it doesn't create that like puckering on the outside of the candle. So that is what I did. I just put it in the microwave for one minute. With the wick secured down now with the hot glue and the straws, now it's time to add the wax. Any project involving hot wax, please make sure you are being careful and make sure that you're protecting anything around you. So just make sure you laid something down nice and big just in case the wax spills or something happens. So sometimes what happens though is when you're pouring the hot wax in with the wicks, they can move a little bit. So now is the time before the wax totally dries to kind of manipulate those wicks back into the position that you wanted them to be in originally. There's not a ton of time, I would say, from the time you pour the wax to the time it's completely solidified, you have about 15 minutes. But when all of that is set and done, you just trim the wicks and this is how your candle will turn out. I picked up two of these canvas bags from the Dollar Tree. They're each $1 a piece. So the first thing that I needed to do was just remove those handles. So I just took my fabric scissors. I am obsessed with my fabric scissors. They are from Amazon. I think they're about $16. I will link them below for you guys. And 
also just to show you guys just like a different option if you wanted to take some of the rope that the Dollar Tree sells and make like a fun design like an abstract design on the face of your pillow I don't end up doing it because again I have very simple style but just an idea and with the handles removed, I just want to now cut out that center graphic that says, you're the cat's meow. Nothing against the graphic, but again, I have very simple, very minimal style, so I just wanted to keep it really simple and really easy. And I'm leaving about a quarter inch all around that perimeter, so each side has something to attach to. And now with that graphic removed, you should have two things that look similar to this. And I'm just going to use some hot glue because personally, I love a good no-sew pillow. Sometimes it just makes things a little bit easier. And what's really nice about this project is the seams were kind of already created when they made the bags in the first place with the exception of the top. So I'm gonna start off by doing the bottom first and just adding a bit of glue on the corners. And then I'm gonna place glue all along the bottom side, just working in about one to two inch sections. And after applying that same process on the left and right side for the top, I am just going to fold that in rather than cut it off. And with that top piece folded in, I'm going to take my 18 by 18 and fill this pillow. This pillow ends up being about a 15 by 15, so it's rather small. It's on the smaller side, but it's the perfect size for my office chair. For the next DIY home decor project, I wanted to make a cork vase. Cork vases can be incredibly expensive, and oftentimes what I find the issue is with things from the Dollar Tree is that they always feel really miniature. So I'm always looking for ways to make bigger pieces because I really believe sometimes like a lot of bigger pieces are what makes it feel more expensive. So I took two of the cylinder vases from the Dollar Tree, the ones that everybody DIYs with, and I took some hot glue and some super glue, and I attached the bottom together. I personally like to leave the stickers on the bottoms of those because I feel like they take adhesive so much better than the actual glass. Then I just took my fabric tape measure and I measured around to see how much of this cork sheet I was going to need. This cork sheet also comes from the Dollar Tree and it is one of my all-time favorite items to work with from the Dollar Tree. So if you ever see it in your store and you love cork in your house, make sure you pick some up. So after I knew how much of the cork I was actually going to need, I just made a marking and then I took something straight. You could take a ruler, I just used the side of a book and I just made a straight line so I knew exactly where I needed to cut. One thing that I found to be incredibly helpful when you are applying the cork to the glass is you wanna make sure that you are applying it straight and even. And I think when you keep the glass from kind of rolling away, it kind of gives you that ability to line everything up really well and press down on things so there's no bubbles because you can't really do anything about it if you do get a bubble. So I would say placing a book or something heavy so your item just doesn't kind of like roll away and gives you another hand to work with um, to make sure that the cork applies nice and even. Next up, I wanted to make a jute trivet. So I'm starting off by using these foam wreath forms that you can find at the Dollar Tree. Specifically, you can find them a lot right now and jute that I ordered on Amazon. So I will share that link below. I'm going to cut a little hole using my styrofoam burner. And you obviously just wanna be careful when you're using this, but this is something I actually found at the thrift store. And it is so convenient when you do a lot of crafts with styrofoam like I do. So I'm just making a small hole using that and adding a dab of hot glue. And then I'm going to 
replace the taped up end of the jute cording. And this is, I think, the easiest way to get the cleanest finish so you don't have any lumps or bumps and everything just stays really nice and even. And again, just as in the first project, at no point am I going to cut the jute until the very, very end and I will tuck it back into that same hole that we started in. And with the hot glue, unlike the first project, I just didn't do every single time I wrapped it around. I probably did it every five times, just so then that way it kind of stayed nice and solidified, but um, it also cut down the time. When the entire jute was wrapped around, I wanted to add just a little like embellishment on it. So I have this little drawer pull that I had left over from other projects and I just decided to add a little bit of hot glue and attach it to the jute. And I think this would look great hanging on a pegboard or stacked on top of some cookbooks. And I'm really happy with the way this project turned out. For the next project, I wanted to make a lavender wall hanging. So to start, I'm using this frame I found at the Dollar Tree, and I need to remove all of those little black clips at the bottom as well as the cardboard. So I'm just taking the frame and the glass and gluing those two pieces together from the back. And I just added enough hot glue that the glass wouldn't move out on me, but not enough so that you would be able to see through it from the front and I needed something for the lavender to sit inside of. So I ended up choosing this little wall pocket you can find in the school section, and I'm going to attach it to the glass. But before I attach it, I wanted to mimic the color of the frame, so I'm choosing to spray paint it in that metallic gold spray paint. And the lavender at the Dollar Tree, this one that's more vibrantly colored, the leaves look really cheap, so I just decided to rip all the leaves off because the top part actually looks pretty good. And after I removed all the leaves and the spray paint had dried, I'm just going to attach this wall pocket to the glass. And to do so, I'm gonna be using super glue. Hot glue, sometimes with glass, I feel like gets cool really fast, so it doesn't attach as well as I want it to and I want this to be something that can last for spring year after year so I'm attaching it using some super glue that you can also find from the Dollar Tree and to distress the pocket a little bit just so it matches the frame a little bit better I'm taking a little bit of black paint and just sort of dry brushing it on and if I added too much I just kind of smeared it with my fingers with everything now matching really well, I wanted to start adding my lavender in. So I ended up buying just two of these bunches and they were still a little bit too long with the wire part attached. So I did have to take my wire cutters and just cut them down to size and place them inside. I didn't glue them in just in case I wanted to switch it up for maybe fall or summer. I want it to be something that can like change with the season. So for right now, for spring, it is going to be lavender in here. But even with this, it was still feeling a bit sparse to me because my inspiration, like I said, came from Target and it was just a lot more full looking. So I actually found these ones as well, which are much better quality in my opinion, but I like the contrast of the lavender color. So I decided to cut these down to size as well, leaving the leaves on because I think these leaves are just a little bit better quality and this is how it turns out. The supplies that I needed from the Dollar Tree were this light here, it's just battery operated. And then I had these circular cork trivets. They were originally from Ikea, but I got them at the thrift store for just 50 cents a piece. And so the first thing I'm doing, I'm just measuring how long it is across this cork trivet. I was excited to find this tool from the Dollar Tree because I couldn't really use my drill on a material like cork, so this was a really handy thing to have for this project. And once that centerpiece was removed, I then took the light that was now dried and I placed it inside of that hole there. Now, one kind of nice thing was because the fit was very tight, I didn't end up having to use any adhesive to kind of connect the cork to the light, which was nice. And then I just took some 3M tape and placed it on the back and this is how it turned out.
And for this project, I really wanted to make a small little riser for my kitchen. We've recently gotten new countertops and I want to protect them because they are quartz countertops so they can be a little bit more work, a little bit temperamental. So from the Dollar Tree, I picked up these two pieces of wood. The wider one is what will be the top and then the longer, thicker one is what I want to make my little legs for this riser. So I'm just measuring the top piece so I know how long I'm going to need to make the cuts in this longer piece of wood. And to cut the wood, I'm actually just going to use my miter saw, but if you don't have a miter saw, I'm sure a hand saw or a circular saw would work out just fine as well. Or try to make a different configuration using things that are already pre-cut at the Dollar Tree. and to attach the legs to the top piece. I'm just gonna use some hot glue. Um, you could use wood glue, you could also use E6000, crazy glue, whatever you have on hand, I think would probably work just fine. And I'm just applying those legs just towards the outer corners, um, leaving just a little bit of space. I love little decor pieces like this because they're obviously not necessarily essential, but it's a great way to add rustic decor into your design style without it being overpowering because it's such a small little piece, but it's definitely something people would notice. And now I just wanted to distress it further. The wood was actually already pretty distressed, but I just wanted to take my hammer to it, especially to the corners and to the edges, just to soften it a bit, because it was feeling just kind of really like harsh. Um, so I just kind of took the side of my hammer and went all around the perimeter of this little riser. And it actually really does make a difference. So if you want a true like rustic feeling riser, I definitely recommend doing this step. For the stain, I ended up going with this gel stain by Minwax in Walnut, and I have really been into and have been seeing a lot of just different tones of like dark brown in home decor recently, and I really love that look a lot. And the reason I went with the gel stain was because I think it's just less messy and you obviously wanna do, no matter what stain you're using, you always wanna do whatever you're doing in a well-ventilated area. So if you're doing it inside, make sure you're opening windows and things like that. But um, I'm just applying one even coat throughout the entire little riser to make sure everything is really well covered. I ended up only having to do one coat of everything to get the color that I wanted. Wood risers can be oftentimes really expensive, especially if they are true rustic or vintage antique risers, and I was able to create this one for just $2. and you guys have actually seen me use this agate piece before, and I'm gonna use it in a different way this time. So the first thing I did was, again, remove that agate piece, and I also picked up some of the scrap wood that the Dollar Tree has been selling recently. You can obviously get more if you go to Home Depot, but this was the perfect size. So this is really nice because it is an all Dollar Tree DIY. I first just wanted to take my orbital sander to just kind of get off all of the rough spots on the wood and to make sure that those prongs were nice and even and smooth. And afterwards, I just used some matte acrylic paint and I just gave it a once over on both sides as well as I picked off one of these little hanging tools from a picture that I was no longer using and that is how I'm going to attach everything together. The first thing I wanted to do was just figure out how I was going to get it to attach to the wall. You could probably use 3M tape if you really wanted to, but I wanted a more secure hold on my wall. So I just took some crazy glue and I attached that hanging piece in between those two prongs on the back so it would have something to attach onto the wall. As well as adding some super glue to those prongs so the shelf would be nice and secure. I wanted to upcycle the Hurricane vase from the Dollar Tree and we've been sampling lots of different backsplashes. So I'm taking this sample from Tile Bar and I'm just going to remove all of these little individual tile pieces and I'm going to attach it to the Hurricane vase. So if you're curious, this is like I said from Tile Bar and it is called Nature. And it kind of gives like a nice like textural but it feels really like light and airy just like spring. 
So as I'm attaching these, I'm trying to think of something you guys could use because I'm sure you don't just have this on hand. Maybe you do, but probably not. So I'm trying to think, what could I tell them to use instead? And then as I'm fixing one of these little tiles, it hit me what you guys should use. And it kept knocking over, it kept knocking over, but then it knocked over the other way and then it hit me, dominoes. So if you wanted to take a stack of dominoes from the Dollar Tree and paint them, give them a stone-like texture, you could get a look that looks really similar to this one. And to attach each of these pieces, I'm going to be using some super glue gel because again, glass with hot glue, sometimes it gets kind of weird. So I like to use the super glue gel instead. And I think it just gives a cleaner finish in the end as well. Now I didn't measure exactly how far apart each one should be. I kind of just eyeballed it and I think it adds to the organic feeling of the vase transformation. And that really wraps up this project. You could use this as a vase. You could use this as a candle holder. Um, you could add more tiles, less tiles. And I think it is a really nice transformation of the hurricane vase. I'm gonna share with you guys how I made these white stone links. Now you can get this huge pack of white foam rings from Amazon for about a dollar a piece, or you can use the green foam ones they sell at the Dollar Tree. I wanted mine to be a little bit smaller of a scale, so that's why I used the white ones. Plus then you don't have to paint them. And then and I'm because using I wanted these links to actually also be find interlocking, I had to cut a slit in one of the foam rings and I just did so using a knife and Basically, I just kind of had to maneuver how I wanted these to lay because that's going to affect kind of where the rocks are placed. And after I just played around with it and was happy with the shape, because I really just wanted these for a sculptural element for my bookshelves, um, I busted out the hot glue gun and just made sure everything stayed nice and put. And hot glue is a great medium for this project because it loves foam. So everything that you do with a hot glue gun and foam seems to stick really, really well. Once the hot glue all kind of settled in, it was just time now to actually do the application of each individual rock on the foam rings. My inspiration for this, every high-end store is selling these marble stone links and they're so expensive, like hundreds and hundreds of dollars for just like a sculptural element for your bookshelf. So I thought that this is a pretty cool kind of dupe for that and I ended up just spending a few dollars to make it. So this is a DIY though that does take quite a bit of time. This actually, you wouldn't believe it, but it does take two hours to do this DIY from start to finish. And that is because you have to glue each individual rock to the foam ring. You can't just add a bunch of hot glue and throw on the rocks because every rock is shaped slightly differently and that can affect how things are going to lay. It's gonna affect the weight and you wanna make sure it looks nice and it looks professional. So um, it's just one of those things you have to take your time, throw on a movie and just keep applying the rocks. Now I tried to place the bigger rocks on the outsides of the rings and the smaller on the inside just so it wouldn't affect the shape too much. Um, but you get what you get in that bag and you just work with what you have. And I tried to work on opposing sections at a time. So I'd work on the right for a little bit and then work on the left for a little bit, just again, because of the weight, I didn't want one side to be too heavy and then things start to look disjointed. So um, I just kind of worked in sections and I felt like that really helped the DIY come together well. And as you start approaching the end, this DIY starts to become almost like a puzzle because you're trying to fit smaller rocks in smaller places and larger rocks to fill up larger spaces. And it actually is kind of challenging to do. So it's challenging in that aspect, but this is the only part that is challenging. Anybody can make this DIY. It's so affordable to make and it looks so beautiful on a shelf. I wanted to share with you guys how I attempted to replicate the scratch faces you can find on McGee and Co's site. And I did two different options so you guys can pick whichever one you like the best to try to replicate yourself. From the dollar store, I ended up picking up two sets of these bowls that you can find in the party section, as well as one larger bowl that looks exactly like this. 
In order to get a closer shape to what I'm trying to replicate, you can use the glass um, bowls from the Dollar Tree, but they're quite round and these are much more angular, which I think is a more similar replication of what we're gonna try to make. And in terms of gluing everything together, I glued the rims of the first two together using my hot glue gun. And then to glue the top one down, I'm just applying some hot glue directly to the bottom of the second bowl so it can attach to the bottom of the third bowl. Now we're doing everybody's favorite little hack here, which is to add baking soda or baking powder to whatever acrylic paint you're using to paint whatever surface you wanna paint. However, I will say that every tutorial, including my own, seem to be falling flat when you're just doing one color. So I'm gonna show you how I kind of got the scratch vase effect. Um, so I think in order to do this and to make it look much more high-end and really realistic, like it is actually pottery, you have to combine two colors. So for this first project on McGee & Co's site, they had a navy blue one. And so the first color I ended up doing is just a light blue application. And then we're going to end up covering the light blue with a much darker blue to kind of give it that scratch effect. Because I didn't have navy acrylic paint, I just decided to use some black paint with that light blue paint to kind of give the color that was similar to what we had seen. And also I'm just using a dollar store brush that you can find at the Dollar Tree. I like this brush a lot because actually it didn't really like shed a lot, which is really nice because usually I find that a lot of the brushes from the Dollar Tree shed quite a bit. And I feel like it gave like a really nice like scratch detail. So that was really what I was trying to achieve with this DIY project. This color combination isn't something you guys have seen me do a lot of. I don't think I've ever painted anything light blue. So I really wanted to try to step outside my comfort zone with this. And I mean, it isn't crazy colored, but it's definitely not a neutral in my home. So I'm very happy with the way this came out because I feel like it does really replicate what I saw on Studio McGee's website, but only for a few dollars. For the second part of this DIY, I ended up using the fourth bowl that came in that pack, as well as I mentioned earlier, the large clear bowl that you can find at the Dollar Tree, again, in the party section. And I'm just gluing the bases to each other. And for this color combination, I wanted to try, I've seen a lot of black pedestal bowls and some of them turn out really, really nice. And I think the ones that seem to turn out nicer than the others is when it has, again, some dimension to it. So I started out by painting the entire thing black and I ended up doing two coats of this just to make sure everything was really well covered. And then the second color I chose was dark brown. Now in the first, part of this DIY, you saw us go from kind of light to dark, which I really liked how that turned out as well. But this one turned out really good too. So I don't know if it would have mattered if I did the light blue after the dark blue, but either way, I think you're in good shape with these two color combinations, the light blue and the dark blue and the brown and the black. So total cost for both pedestal bowls was $6, which is incredible. And also as like a parenting perspective, this is nice to put on bottom bookshelves because they look like pottery, but they're plastic. So your kids cannot break them. And for the last project of this video, this is actually an old DIY, but it is still one of your guys' favorites. So I wanted to share it again. And that is a hula hoop wall shelf. And I haven't seen hula hoops being sold at the Dollar Tree yet this year, but I know it's coming. And the first thing you need to do is just remove that sticker that's all over the hula hoop. It's really easy. You don't need to do anything to it first. You just peel it right off. And then just so your hoop doesn't shake anymore, just separate it at its seam and then dump out its contents. There's just like little beads in there that you'll want to remove. And after you do that, um, just hot glue it back together so it is nice and secure. And once the hot glue dried, I just removed the excess with my fingers. And then I know the Dollar Tree now sells some scrap wood. Um, this one, I believe I just had on hand and I'm just taking some measurements, finding that middle 
um, of the side so that way it would adhere to the hoop um, itself. So I'm just taking my drill and I'm drilling some small holes on the side that we are going to eventually stick our pegs through to connect the hoop to the shelf. Now, don't ever hold wood between your legs and do it like I did. Just, um, you know, make sure you have like a situation where it's way more safe. So I'm just holding the hoop now and then drilling small holes so now everything can be connected to each other. And now I'm just checking to make sure that my measurements were good and that everything is going to connect to each other before I spray paint the hoop. Um, I think I ended up painting it with some farmhouse black spray paint by rust -Oleum, And once that had dried, I took it back inside. I glued my pegs to the shelf. So that way when it was all done, I would be able to connect it to our hula hoop. And just to jazz up the shelf a little bit, I did stain it using special walnut and I still like that stain a lot, but actually I've been gravitating to a much darker stain that I really like, which is dark walnut. I know I've really branched out. But anyway, now I'm going to put the wall shelf inside the hula hoop and I'm just doing so using some hot glue. If I was to do this project today, I might decide to use some super glue instead, some super glue gel just to give it a more secure hold. Now this as a whole is actually a very big piece of like wall decor, but the shelf itself is quite small. So I would say that just putting like a few little things on here is all that it could really hold, but it is still such a beautiful project and still one of my favorites as well. And if you've made it to this point, you are a real OG. Thank you so much for staying till the very end and watching this video in its entirety. If you liked it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and tell me down in the comments which Dollar Tree DIY project was your favorite and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.